welcome back to this training session for emergency operative neurosurgery in this session we'll uh, discuss regarding how do you operate uh, operate upon a patient with frontal and temporal contusions what is a contusion contusion is bleeding within the brain parenchyma contusion is bleeding which is intermixed with some normal brain parenchyma so contusions are usually almost always because of head injury that is a traumatic they are components of traumatic brain injury so let us uh, let us uh, know how to operate upon these serious conditions of the brain okay and let me share my screen so we'll be discussing surgery for several contusions of the frontal and temporal bones and also i will speak about the lobar resection in case of a temporal contusion so before i go into the operative procedure per se let us discuss regarding the indications for surgical intervention in these cases an operative intervention is indicated in the setting of the frontal or a temporal contusion which is greater than 20 cm cube in volume which is more than 20 cubic centimeters in volume and which is also associated with one of, with one of the following glasgow coma scare of 6 to 8 midline shift of at least 5 mm and systernal compression any lesion irrespective of location which is greater than 50 cubic centimeter also also required surgery and also any lesion irrespective of size which is causing progressive neurological decline which is causing refractory intracranial hypertension which is defined as icp more than 20 mm of mercury which is not responsive to maximal medical therapy or when you see mass effect on a ct scan and also a temporal lobe hematoma greater than 30 cc in volume with or without any midline shift or elevation of the middle cerebral artery these patients are particularly prone for transtentorial herniation because the space of the middle cranial fossa is very limited so these are all the classical indications for a patient with frontal or temporal contusion who requires surgery so this is a patient with frontal contusion obviously this volume appears to be more than 30 cc in volume you can see the midline shift you can see the ipsilateral cortical sulci being obliterated similarly this is a patient with temporal contusion the volume is more than 20 cc again the sylvian fissure is obliterated you can see the ventricles they are compressed they are not seen obviously the intracranial pressure is very high in both these patients one important decision which you have to take is the choice of surgical approach two different approaches are described one is a bicoronal and the modified terional approach for for frontal lobe contusion which are medially located which is medially located frontal contusions a bicoronal approach is more appropriate but for a contusion which is which is located lateral in the frontal lobe or when the frontal contusion is associated with a temporal lobe or when the patient has a temporal contusion alone then modified terional ter approach is preferred in this episode we will speak about terional approach modified terional approach in my next session i will be speaking about bifrontal approach so as everything as any operative neurosurgical procedure positioning makes an important uh, important part of the procedure so you can see the position over here this position is almost similar to the position which you keep for either for decompressive cranial uh, for decompressive craniectomy or for evacuation of an acute subdural hematoma so i am not speaking much about this particular step 
you can refer to our previous videos on decompressive craniectomy, our previous videos on evacuation of an acute subdural hematoma. It's nearly same as that. Even the skin flap for a modified tereonal is nearly same as a classical falconer flap, which you take for decompressive craniectomy. But depending on incision, you can taper the extent of the posterior ex extent of the flap. If it's a frontal, if it's a lateral frontal contusion, the flap needn't be so large. You can tailor the posterior extent of the flap. But when you are deciding the extent of flap, you should take into consideration the location and volume of the frontal contusion. And also you should take into consideration the location of the edema around the contusion. The flap which you are taking into, uh, taking into consideration, the flap which you are take, planning should take into consideration the combined volume of the contusion along with the pericontusional edema. It should encom encompass both of them. Elevation of the temporalis muscle, similar as the decompressive craniectomy. The bone removal, which is almost similar as evacuation of a decompressive craniectomy or evacu evacuation of acute subdural hematoma. The bone flap removal, almost same as the previous procedures. Opening of the dura mater, almost same. Now, now once you have opened up the temporal, opened up the dura mater. Now com comes the temporal contusion into view. So what are the steps for evacuation of the temporal contusion? First, identify the sylvian fissure. So step one is identify sylvian fissure. So how do you identify the sylvian fissure? Identification of the sylvian fissure is best done in relation to the location of the sphenoid bridge. So this is the sphenoid bridge. If necessary, you may drill the base of the sphenoid bridge until flush with the anterior middle cranial fossa to augment the surgical exposure. Then inspect the cortical surface. Second step. Inspect the cortical surface. Identify the ideal area of entry. An area of obvious contusion or cortical disruption is the ideal site of entry. Once you have identified the site of entry, so second step was identify the site of entry. Once you have identified the site of entry, Cauterize the superficial vessels and the parameter at the planned entry site. Use a number le level blade or 15 blade. Approach the hematoma cavity in the subfile plane with a combination of gentle suction and bipolar electrocort. Once you enter into the hematoma cavity, use a gentle suction to evacuate any liquid clot and also the solid clot in a, piece with, in a piecemeal fashion. Continue evacuation until you see the gliotic brain or the normal brain or the edematous brain. Now, what are the important pearls or important hints in this phase? You can identify the sylvan fissure either with the help of a sphenoid ridge are with the help of the middle cerebral vein. But of all, both the landmarks, sphenoid ridge is a more reliable landmark. When you are entering into the cortical cavity, you can use a malleable retractor, which is supported by cotton with a cotton party, which is moistened with saline. So you can use your malleable retractor over this cotton party gently. So this helps in retraction. It helps in illumination going into the cavity. At the same time, it protects the underlying brain. And one more important, this part of the surgery, that is evacuation of the hematoma, is always done, uh, is always at the best done. In our institute, it's always done with the help of a operating microscope.
coming to the next step some cases where the temporal contusion is very large so in the even that the temporal lobe is severely contused you may plan for a anterior temporal lobectomy when you are operating on the non dominant temporal lobe that is on the right side usually we can remove up to 5 to 6 cm of the temporal lobe if it is on the non dominant side that is on the left side try to remove the less amount which is less than 3 to 4 cm in any cases the usually the posterior limit is the junction of the sylvian fissure and the central sulcus but these are just guiding points but not always and depending on the extent of contusion extent of permanent damage to the brain extent of edema the operating surgeon can take a decision up to the extent of temporal lobectomy so once this is done ensure perfect hemostasis use a combination of uh, surgical combination of abgel sometimes you can use pressure from cotton patty ensure complete hemostasis once you have done with complete hemostasis plan just like uh, you plan for the evacuation acute subdural hematoma assess what is the extent of edema in the brain plan assess whether the brain is below the surface of inner table of the skull or above the or above that if you feel there is no edema if you feel that the chances of developing an edema in the future date is less you can do a primary close primary closure of the dura suppose you feel suppose the brain is bulging suppose it's bulging above the in level of inner table suppose either the radiological picture or the appearance of the brain suggests that the patient is going to develop edema in the future days you, you can do an expansal duroplasty expansal duroplasty some of the surgeons in my place they prefer not to do a watertight duroplasty but they close the dura with tack up sutures and then augment the duroplasty with abgel in our experience it's a beautiful technique when we open up the open up the brain for bone flap replacement bone flap replacement we usually see a perfect layer which is formed over it similarly just like the previous in previous sessions the session of decompressive craniectomy the session of acute subdural hematoma you can decide whether to uh, remove the bone flap or replace it black, back then you close the temporalis muscle and the skin in layers after placing a close suction drain so this completes my session on operative session uh, operative session on evacuation of frontal and temporal contusions with the approach being a modified tyrional approach in my, in my next session i will discuss the bifrontal approach for medial frontal contusions so let us complete our session over here thanks for attending this session thanks for subscribing to my channel do share this videos with your neurosurgery colleagues your junior colleagues this will be definitely useful and as we all know these emergency neurosurgical techniques are life saving and when done meticulously this can although there is still a high mortality depending on the presenting gcs of the patient this technique is life saving and it can save lives of hundreds of people in a in our career so bye for now thank you let's meet again in our next session for bifrontal decompressive craniectomy for medial frontal contusions thank you